it's Janet Wakeland here with Remarkably Created and I am popping on today to share some fun ideas for, with you using the Cheerful Basket Bundle. So we're going to get right to it. We're going to go ahead and flip that camera around and this is the really fun bundle that I'm talking about. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with Stampin' Up! Bundles, what they are is they are a two-piece grouping of products that coordinate and work together and they are at a discounted price. You can, however, also purchase them individually. And so this sweet set here, Cheerful Basket, sending you some get well cheer, you fill my day with happiness, inspired by you. You've got three different toppers for the basket, a sweet little kitty and a butterfly. And then for the dies, we've got lots of fun pieces. This one has a lot of built in what I like to call extra pieces or value added pieces. And let me finish pulling everything out here for you so that you can take a look at them. So let's just finish getting them all out here for you. When you first get them, they're on these adhesive sheets. You can, and it stays really tacky, so you can actually use them just to put the tacky, um, put the pieces right back on and keep them in place. Some people like to move them to magnetic sheets. There's lots of different ways for storing them. I personally just use this adhesive here to kind of hold them all back in place and keep them in their original folder. I always try to be as low cost as possible in my storage and um, things like that. So what you've got is you've got these three little um, kind of like, almost like pine branches. So you've got three greenery pieces there. You have the, the dies to cut the three toppers out. So you're gonna be able to cut out the crafting supplies, the apples and the hearts. You have a shape here that will fit the basket. So if we actually lay this in here, you're going to have, let me get these right. There we go, the apples, the hearts. You're gonna have the crafting supplies. You're gonna have that little butterfly, and I love when we get dies like that because there's some things that have got tiny, tiny little legs, tiny little antennae and things like that. And oftentimes, if you're trying to cut them by hand, it's so easy to, to give them a little trim and to cut all of those things off. So you've got those dies right there, those six dies that actually cut stamped images. But then again, you have, again, these bonus value added pieces. You can make your own apples and there's some tiny little leaves to put on your apples. There is a handle for the basket. This is a little bandana to do a basket liner. You have some slats for a basket. The ability to make a 3D basket when you incorporate this piece into it and we will put a basket together. You've got some fun leaves, some bonus hearts, and even a bigger piece of greenery. So lots and lots of great pieces that are part of this bundle that you're going to have um, lots of possibilities with. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you one sample first. And then we're gonna go ahead and jump into making a card. I'm gonna assemble this basket. And if you stay with me till the end, I have um, a few more samples for you showing you some varieties and pairing it with some other products. So in this case, we used the extra pieces to create a three-dimensional basket instead of the stamp. The greeting, there's that little extra bandana, the, the liner piece, the handle, and then I used the craft supplies and one of our sweet, fun peekaboo bags. So let's go ahead and let's make a card together. Literally, we're gonna kind of more or less just glue it together but it'll give me a chance to talk to you about some, some extra pieces and just some fun things. Okay, so first and foremost, let's, before we glue that card together, let's take and assemble a basket. I did this as a really quick, like 30 second video, but I thought it bears repeating in this longer video. So if you wanna make a three dimensional basket, you're going to need the die that cuts the whole basket out. This one cuts and texturizes with wood. And then there's the one die that makes the three slats. You can do it all one color and simply sponge it. You can do it in three different colors. You can choose two colors. In this case, I am going to be using soft suede and crumb cake. If you look at the, the, the dies, they do have a little bit of a curve to them, the die cut pieces. And in this case, I'm going to start under are over, yes. So I'm gonna start behind, 
Okay, over, under, over. So under, and then those little die pieces will line up with the um, slant of the basket. So that's the only tip when you're putting these in. So now in this case, we'll go the opposite way. And then again, this one has those angles and I think I, so we'll just, oops, I used the wrong size. Sorry about that guys. Let's put the right size one on in the middle. Or did I do it right? Oh my gosh. It's just been a day. Sorry about that. I had it right. Second guess myself sometimes and I shouldn't do that. I should be more trusting of my skills and my instincts, right? But how many of you do that? You second guess yourself and you're like, oh my gosh, I was right all along. And you know what? Second guessing yourself actually sometimes creates more work. <laughs> so it's not a good thing. So you're going to have your little slats. You'll want to go ahead and secure them down and you can do that with just a little bit of adhesive and then you're going to adhere that and you've got your three-dimensional basket. How fun is that, right? So that's, oh, and then the other piece that you'd want to add, we have this little handle and I cut mine out of silver. And so using some liquid glue, you can now go ahead and add a handle nice and easy to your bushel basket. So lots of possibilities with that. So for this card here, I went ahead and I stamped the basket because I wanted you to see what the basket looks like stamped next to three dimensional. So just totally different look, I think. Um, this one definitely has that, you know, more of the um, depth of color because it's using cardstock. This one has a stamped image that I just went ahead and took a little bit of, I took the water painter and a little bit of ink and just kind of brushed it over used our parakeet party for the liner. You've got your leaves, just a little dot there. And then to color the apples, I used sweet sorbet and mango medley. I did a little mango kind of on the shaded sparts and then made them look like red delicious apples. Of course, there's lots and lots of different kinds of apples out there. Color them with your favorite apple. And little tip for you, the reason why these leaves are here is this handle actually works on the basket but this handle is not, it's, it's not necessarily the right size for the stamped image, if that makes sense, okay? It kind of lays just a little bit funny. So the leaves are kind of hiding that little short end. So there's always a way to, to make everything work. So we have that piece. For our project, and we're gonna save those leaves, we're gonna need them. For our project, I have a piece of cardstock that is five and a half by 11 inches. And I'm simply going to fold it in half and get my bone folder out and give it a nice crease. I have a piece of paper. This paper I like. It kind of looks like the old um, grocery store receipt papers, the old ledgers and things like that. And this is from the Abigail Rose suite of papers, but it just reminded me of some of the old receipts from old country stores and things like that, which is why I picked it. We're gonna go ahead and put that on. And if you've watched my videos, you know that I'm a fan of a quarter inch border. So that means that this piece of paper has been cut to four inches by five and a quarter, giving me that quarter inch border around. If you are new to card making, there are no rules for how big this border has to be. Play around visually. Um, sometimes make it three quarters of an inch, sometimes make it an eighth of an inch. Sometimes you can even make it a half of an inch. There's no rules. It's what's visually, aesthetically pleasing to you. So then I took and used in the Blossoming Happiness dies, there are some other value added pieces. And one of them is this really cool border piece right here. And what this really cool border piece does is it creates a notebook edge. And again, since I was using the paper that created the feel of a ledger, that's what I went with and I'm just using my fingers to kind of pull them up a little bit and you can push them back and forth in different directions but just making them kind of distressed. You could also sponge them a little bit if you wanted to. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put some adhesive down and I'm going to line it up with this line right here. And then I also did the designer paper did the same thing and we'll distress it up just a little bit. And this is from the happiness, the happy forest friends. 
just wanted a little bit of green and something that had a little bit of a woodsy look to it. And then I was gonna put my basket down, but I still wanted just a little bit of contrast and I'll be honest, I should have brought the circles to the table, but I played with olive, olive was a bit much. I played with um, the colors in the apples and they were a bit much. So I resorted to my go-to and that's cardstock vellum. I love that cardstock vellum will give you just enough of a contrast sometimes so that the element on top stands out but it doesn't stand out in such a way that it's taking away from all of the other elements that you're putting on your project. So we're gonna just put a little bit of adhesive on here, which would be behind the basket. And actually you could put your basket down first and know exactly where you can put adhesive. In this case, I'm just taking advantage of experience with my projects and kind of knowing what. And I'm gonna show you something. You'll notice that this paper has been stamped on the back side. You can recycle and repurpose your papers. Stampin' Up's papers magically have two sides to them, so if you make a blunder on one side, just flip it over and get to stampin' on the other side of it. It'll stretch your cardstock, things will go a lot further, and you don't end up with as much waste and things like that. So before I tie that down, let's go ahead and let's get hold of our linen thread. And I'm just gonna grab a couple of big lengths here and I'm gonna tie a bit of a bow. Just kind of guessing how I want that to be. And let's grab some scissors. I'm gonna cut the tails long for now. And linen thread's fun because it's thin enough that you can double and triple it up, giving yourself some nice um, kind of fun loops and things like that and some, some more tails. And I'm gonna put that up here at the top. We'll put just a touch of adhesive. We'll let that dangle through. Let's pull the backing off of our dimensionals. And I've got all these little extra pieces and I don't, there, that takes care of them. That corrals them, right? So little tip for you. It's a good reason to use um, your snail type of adhesive. If I had done that with liquid glue, it'd just be a hot mess. So I'm just gonna kind of let these hang down just a little bit. And then once I have them on the card, I'll come back in and give them just a little bit of a haircut. And then the only thing left is I've got two little embellishments here, two extra little leaves. And I love dies that emboss and die cut. Can you see the embossed lines on that? Is it focusing? I love dies that do that. And we're just gonna kind of bring those in here just a little extra depth and then the last thing we'll add is a greeting and so now we've just got a fun card and with the crumb cake it is light enough to stamp and write your message directly inside but it's also nice in this case to add a little bit of coordinating so either um, white or vanilla to the inside for your message and things like that so let's bring in some more samples for you so in this case, we used the kitty, we used the heart topper, we stamped the basket, and um, I used the little hearts that are part of that cheerful basket just for some extra fun. Of course, you've got the little handle on there. And this card I didn't fully glue together because I wanna show you something. Sometimes you want to use designer paper, but you don't, the, the inside of that, that designer paper, the flip side of it, isn't like, you know, this card is all about hearts. It doesn't have anything to do with mushrooms. So when this flipped open, I didn't want mushrooms. So what I did and what I'll finish doing now is adhering this together. I just adhered two pieces of designer paper back to back. This is, um, oh my gosh, which set this from? This is from the host pack. And then this is from the Happy Forest Friends. So I'll finish adhering that, but I left it open because I wanted to give you that tip. Um, and then this is just a fun fold on a quarter sheet of cardstock kind of um, similar to what I showcased for you guys. So now we can go ahead and we can finish that off. This card has another fun tip. If I leave this like this, can you see this border here? A really versatile set of dies are our basic border dies. And it's always fun to go ahead and pull things out like this and just go ahead and put them to work, which is what I did right here, just creating just that little bit of fun scalloped edge 
and I'm giving it that little bit of extra. So that's our lots of love. And the lots of love, I'll see if I can remember where the greeting was from and share that with you. Um, I'll go back and add it into the description uh, that I wanted something that said love. Now, just because you've got really great stamps in the bundle, you've got the hearts, you've got the apples, you've got the fun crafting supplies, right? Doesn't mean though that you have to use those in the basket. There's other great things that you can do. For example, these are the flowers from Bottled Happiness. And I went ahead and stamped those down first, and then I added my 3D basket over the top, okay? So we put flowers in that basket to make it look like a beautiful planter. We did something similar with this one, and in this case, these are the flowers from the Tea Boutique. And can you see the actual flowers? Aren't those embellishments fun? Lots of possibilities with those embellishments. We. Um, used the frame from Fabulous Frames, designer papers behind, and again, that three-dimensional. And you're gonna have so much fun creating those little liners. And the little liners actually, if I, maybe, no, that one doesn't show it. This one might show it the best. I don't know if you can see, but it does leave a little bit of a plaid mark. Okay, so that's fun. And then I wanted to be really outside the box and I wanted to think what else. And I will be honest, the very first time I saw these and I saw the die. I specifically saw this. When I saw that, this shape in the catalog, the first thing I thought was cupcakes. And I'm always looking for thinking outside of the box. So in this case, the only thing on this card from the cheerful bundle is the basket. I did not pop the slats out. And now I have a great cupcake holder. The icing, the cupcake top is our new um, circular punch. The greeting and the candle is from our Charming Sentiments and I just added more polka dots to the card. So I was able to make a birthday card and creating a fun little cupcake. So lots and lots of possibilities with this sweet basket and my holiday catalog products will be arriving tomorrow and I've already got several ideas based on things that I saw in the catalog and the reasons why I ordered some of the products for holiday fun, whether it's Christmas, Thanksgiving, or um, Halloween items that I can fill into these baskets. So you're gonna find lots and lots to do with these elements. But what really stretches your products is when you start to really look at what else you have around, whether it's your you know, circles dies, whether it's your frames, um, you know, whatever things do you have. And the more that you use all of your products, the more value you add to them. If you buy them and use them just once, you really haven't um, utilized them to their full potential and gotten the value of your dollar out of that purchase. So I'll be taking pictures of these and I will continue to add photos to that 2022-23 photo album that you saw me add photos to this morning. If you don't have a catalog yet that has all of these great products in it, make sure you message me, especially if you live in the US because that's who I can provide catalogs for, guys. So have an amazing evening and um, hopefully you've got great plans for the weekend. Thanks, guys.